So it's the night before and let's try and get an idea of things of what happened last night and why it might have happened. Hey up, how are we all doing? Uh, I'm Punkchef41 and welcome to this video. You could like, share and subscribe to the channel. I much appreciate it. Liking helps the algorithm. Sharing gets in front of people's faces and subscribing lets me know you like the channel. Hit that notification bell to let you know when videos go live and when live stream happen. Like last night when everything broke and hit the proverbial fan. And let's figure some stuff out, shall we? So, it got announced just before 6pm on Monday that Darren Moore had gone. And there's a video that went out uh, by Talk4 on Friday where Darren Moore was saying he was already getting ready to sort out targets. He was looking forward to working with the boys. He was starting to get it sorted. Now, the star had come out and said, discussing the possible transfer move with an external recruitment source as recently as the last couple of days. Now, that makes me wonder if Darren Moore wanted to do a lot of the recruitment himself. Uh, I think then that with only 47 days to go until championship season starts, uh, went to have only 14 senior players confirmed on their books heading into new camp. Moore was understood to have taken on a spearhead of the vital summer transfer activity with a head of recruitment leaving to David Downs. This says to me that Darren Moore wanted full control of transfers and that Chancery wanted another head of recruitment or director of football kind of role to come in and help Darren Moore get players in. Um, kind, You know what I mean? It's that, it, that kind of thing that we kind of want to know a little bit more about. And I think the thing tonight is going to be very, very, very interesting, the fan forum, what gets said. Um, it does feel like a big kind of Chancery didn't trust Darren Moore to do the recruitment and Chancery wanted someone in to help Darren Moore recruit or have someone in that would do that. Like maybe we didn't want to go in, into a head of recruitment model anymore. He wanted to be the one to come in, do the do it all and all that kind of stuff. Now, the interesting thing that's going to be for me is the wording of what we get through. Um, you know what I mean? It's what we get through is going to be interesting because... The wording of what it is, is it going to be a manager or is it going to be a head coach? That will tell you big clues of what, what direction we're going in. I still think Darren Moore wanted certain players in January and we know this now and he didn't get four, he didn't get them in and he wasn't happy with it and recruitment wise there may have been an issue. Um it's I'm I'm worried that Chancery going to go back into the micromanagement days of running the club. And we've done ever so well to get away from that model of him running it that way. And that's what worries me. Um, I don't know if that worries anyone else. I think you've got to let a manager do his job. And then if the, ga if the, if the manager said, I need this, this and this player, you either back him or you say... We can't have this play, but could you look at an alternative? And I wonder if that was a bit of that going on as well. It put, it put the entire of the season into such a weird, weird little bit of... I don't know. It, it put it into such a weird way of doing it. You know what I mean? Uh... I, I'm really, really interested by what gets done now. And I will be interested to see what happens with whoever comes in. Because whoever comes in have got to bring in their own backroom staff. They've got to bring in their own people. So you've got to bring in a new goalkeeping coach. You've got to bring in a new assistant. You've got to bring in... you replacing Jimmy Shan, Silai Island, Ad Antonio Basso. Uh, with 13 staff uh, and this is normal when 
managers really go. They take the staff. But sometimes it's kind of thing that is interesting. Like one of the people who's actually still at the club who was brought in by Darren Moore is Rob Lee. Rob Lee is still at the club. He didn't leave with the rest. And I'm intrigued by what happens. Um... It's in, it's interesting that the Peterborough United owner is not shocked by uh, the de- decision. Uh, uh, I think he said he said he said in a tweet he's not shocked that it happened. So it's interesting there, and he's worked in football a long time, and apparently it's one of those things where you see it and you think, hmm. Was there something there that he knows or knows something? Because, like I said, the chairman and thing they felt, they, was there something that got said in that meeting? Was there something that was uh, sorted in that way? But And that's interesting because he's had a conversation recently with uh, Chancellor and stuff. So let's see what happens. But it's interesting. The day after this, and I still feel weird about it, I... I'm still in my head. I'm seeing things that happened during the season where I can see why it's happened now kind of thing. But yeah, let me know what you think on this. Was it, is there an issue with external recruitment coming in and Dan Moore want a full control? Or is is it just, is that the reason why Darren's gone and they've gone, you know what, agree, agreement done part ways. See, see you later. Thank for your service, Darren. Let me know in the comment section below.